Father Bob, can you please introduce our, our guest esteemed, tonight. esteemed guest? Extremely este- esteemed. <laughs> Helen Pankhurst, who is the great-granddaughter of one of the original suffragettes, Emmeline Pankhurst. Who's the subject of the film Suffragettes and in the cinema. Yeah, exactly, in, in boxing, on Boxing Day. Now, Helen, when you were really young, when did, when did it first come into your mind? Did you know that you were related to someone who was super famous in history? I think because I had the surname, um, even when quite young people would ask me about it, and I think I realised quite soon that the name carried a certain uh, connotation. And in particular, when I came to the UK for the holidays, because I grew up in Addis, in Ethiopia, so there it didn't have that... Uh, people didn't know it for that reason. They knew about it for other reasons, actually, because my father's a historian, so people knew about that. But they didn't know about the whole suffragette issue. So when I came to the UK um, during the holidays, people would say, oh, are you related? And I'd say yes. And um, so jealous. You had, there. So Hang on. So you, you had a father who's in Ethiopia and you grew up there. Did he like wear a pith helmet and all that stuff like that? Uh, uh, no, he was a, a peace helmet. No, no, he was an academic. Then no helmets at all. But yeah, that's, it sounds like you had a. That w- w- was it a exciting upbringing. It was a wonderful East? upbringing. I, I, I feel I love the country. It's a fascinating place, and I feel part Ethiopian in many ways. So it's part of my heritage, and um, it's both a beautiful country and it's one that has some major issues to deal with. And as a woman, I was very aware of the position of uh, women and girls there being quite difficult, to put it mildly. Wow. That's um, good because my dad was an accountant. So, <laughs> and just in Melbourne. So that sounds w- way w- more exciting. Then, and, and so what, what did you start hearing about your great-grandmother? Well, the fact that she was uh, an icon of political feminism and continues to be and is so in countries that are very far away from the UK. So I think she carries a global uh, image of uh, a matriarch, somebody who uh, led the movement and her family. And, and how old was she when she started being a feminist? Very activist? young, actually very young. Her first, she was, uh, came from a family of social activists and um, she married somebody who was interested in the issues, who was a radical himself, Richard Pankhurst. Um, but uh, she came to prominence really in terms of the suffragette movement, the WSPU, in 1903, which she founded together with her daughters. By that point, her husband had died and she was also looking after the welfare of the whole family. And how do you think she started thinking about human rights for women? Like, because I guess lots of people back then weren't. I think there had been a lot of uh, campaigns by men and women to widen the franchise. And in terms of men's access to the votes, uh, it had changed over time. So it had widened to from a very, very very small percentage to more. Um, And there had been a lot of discussions about including women. And she had been involved in the societies that did that. But there were a number of factors that came together to form a moment when she and the rest of the family in this small group said, look, we can't just do this the normal way. It will take too long. We need a lot more of an active um, movement and a demand for change rather than a softly, softly approach. And demand to change, you mean giving women the right to vote. I guess we should should spell that out. And what was the most, what what was the most controversial thing she did? The most controversial action? I don't know that there's a single um, action. I think it was that approach that we won't give up um, and we will put our own lives on the line, probably. Uh, Here was a government that was uh, blocking the constitutional right to say, when will women get the vote, to ask that single question. And I think that she was willing to lead a movement of civil disobedience until uh, the response was that women would get the vote. I mean, it seems incredible the, that they had to go through uh, the levels of violence that they did and that the government was willing to force feed women, uh, women who just wanted to have a say in how they were governed. And so what's an example of this violence? An example of the government's violence was that uh, initially women who stood up to ask the question, when will women get the vote, would be marched off and chucked out of the meeting halls. Then they started to be arrested. 
then when the women wanted to be treated as political prisoners, which had certain advantages in terms of not wearing prison clothes, for example, um, when they were not treated as political prisoners, one of them started to uh, hunger strike and then a lot of them followed suit and then they were force fed. Um, and so there's a lot of uh, uh, violence around that whole issue about being imprisoned. Uh, and a lot of abuse as well, physical abuse, emotional abuse, outside the apparatus of the state, but also by civilians who didn't believe that things could change either. And what's it like when, like, what actually happens when, like, when a film company decides, hey, they want to film a film? Um, do they like contact the family and make sure they're cool with it, or what happens? Um, yes, well, in this case, they did. So Sarah Gavron, the director, contacted me and showed me the script, and I really I loved the script, and I loved the fact that it was about the issues. We get a lot of films that claim to be about an issue, but you leave the cinema not really having understood what it was all about. Um, or we get documentaries that tell you a lot of things, but actually you switch off because you get a bit bored in the middle. Um, I think this film manages the balance between the two. Um, um, so, yeah, they contacted me and um, I've been involved in many stages of it, right through to being here in Australia, to promoting it um, ahead of release on Boxing Day. And was was there any fights over things in the scripts, like whether that's true or not true? They had a few advisors and they did change the angle of the film over time. Interestingly, they started off with feeling that it should be about a middle class woman uh, middle to upper class woman's experiences and then they ended up um, f focusing on another character who seemed to live and breathe in ways that would be more relevant to today so they ended up focusing on the character of Maud so the film the relationship between the director and the filmmaker were critical and sorry and the scriptwriter were critical in evolving the um, story over time um, and that was really between them I was involved in I think I made one significant contribution really which was a suggestion that at the end of the film there's a roll call of when uh, other countries uh, women got the vote in other countries and I felt that that would universalize the whole experience and bring us to the present um, in ways that would be uh, valuable interesting father Bob Helen did you have Pankers, a question? Helen Pankers Bob McGuire in Melbourne I was I struck by the um, what you're saying was a very important uh, part of your being involved in the film was to bring your great grandmother grandmother and great aunts back together. Yes. Retrospective um, redemption. Retrospective redemption, not just within the family, but across the schisms of the time, in the in that um, Helena Bonham Carter, one of the key uh, actors in the film, is actually of the lineage of Herbert Asquith, the Prime Minister, who was in opposition of women getting the votes. And so here she is, um, 100 years later, playing a suffragette. So there's a lot of power... Um, of film to bring people together. Mm. And the other, the other thing about uh, resonated with me is our concern about uh, Guantanamo Bay and the ghastly practices used against prisoners. And um, one of the most harrowing scenes in the film is 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 about the force feeding of the yes, suffragettes. Yes, the, the violence that the state was willing to go through to stop women from being. Uh, active citizens is uh, is incredible it's horrific and i think i often think about the fact that that wasn't just a single act in the film it's bad enough just seeing it once but the women who stood up who had the courage of conviction to um face force feeding time and time and time and time again and what that did the damage that that did to their digestive systems and to the whole of their psyche because you don't go through that all of that and not be scarred do you think whether the current generation of young women would be prepared to do what the point you're making is that those women would do anything for the cause i think Lose there are family mm, health uh, yeah. freedom go all the way for the cause i think there are many women trying to make a difference in their own uh, arenas uh, through social media and many other ways. There are some heroic women who are fighting against domestic violence and many other issues. My thoughts go to the uh, women standing for parliament in Saudi Arabia this month on the 12th of December. Around a thousand of them are standing uh, to be elected and it must take an incredible level of courage and commitment to do that in a country that treats women so... Um, it's so badly.
And what did you think about the minor controversy that where some people were saying because they could, they took the catchphrase "I'd rather be a rebel than a slave." Is that, that the catchphrase and 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 kind of using it in you know on posters and stuff? And people were saying, or so, some young people who arguably didn't know a lot about history were were, were, were kind of going, "Well, why are you using the word rebel? Because rebel that's." That they're, they're the Confederate soldiers in America during the Civil War, and slave is the black people, and they'll they'll kind of focusing and kind of getting upset about that. Yeah, it's such a pity. I mean, if Emily knew that her words, because it was her words that were used there, if she knew that her words were interpreted in that way, she would have been horrified because actually she and her family had been um, involved in the anti-slavery abolition movement. So um, if she had thought that that um, rebel was being interpreted that way, she'd be saying, oh, that's not what I meant. It's, it's also like, you know, I found it like some weird kind of time travel political correctness, like trying to impose 2015 on 1903. Like, I don't know, a bit like going through Anne Frank's diary and trying to find if she's used the wrong gender pronoun on on someone. It just seemed like, it it seemed totally odd. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it was a distraction. I mean, the only hope is that it's created more discussion and discussion is useful and hopefully more people will have heard about it as a consequence. I think to the extent that it also raises the issue of intersectionality and the fact that in many countries, for example, in the States, that issue of um, gender and colour intersected in very uncomfortable ways in those um, the, the civil rights movement and the feminist movement and the uh, suffrage movement in the States. That, that was, uh, you know, really conflicted. You had... Um, a complicated story as to which was considered to be more important and how that was fought. So to the extent that it raises the the fact that um, often uh, women's rights cut across many other issues, that is useful and important. So, for example, in the roll call of the different countries and when they got the vote, um, a particular date is given. But we know in every single country, so take in Australia, there is a date given. But not every woman in that country, in Australia, got the vote on that date. Often uh, women of colour, uh, women sometimes of particular caste or um, uh, ethnic background or family background or religious background would have stopped um, them from getting the vote. So uh, when we see dates about when women got the votes, that's actually the best case scenario, not the... Uh, the the most the the one that meant that everybody got it then. Thank you so much for joining us, Helen Pankhurst, the great granddaughter of one of the original suffragettes, and the movie Suffragette is in cinemas Boxing Day.